Hello, and welcome to this special report here at XM.com. I'm Maria Pachardis, and joining me is investment analyst Marios Hachigiriagos. We'll be discussing the current mania in the stock market and the risks going forward. So, Marios, since the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic back in March 2020, the equity market has staged an epic comeback. There is clearly a disconnect between the real economy and financial markets. Why is that? Hello, Maria. Well, it's a combination of factors. So let's start with the most important one. It's central banks. I know this argument is getting old at this point, but central banks uh, have gone all out to fight this crisis. They've slashed interest rates to zero. They are buying all sorts of bonds to power up the recovery. Now, that means that the yields on those bonds have fallen dramatically to the point where most government bonds are now negative yielding assets once inflation is accounted for. What does this mean? It means you're guaranteed to lose money when you buy bonds. Bonds have gone from being a risk-free asset to being to now being a return-free risk. And if you are guaranteed to lose money buying bonds, the only real alternative you have left is the stock market because commodity markets are far too small. Now, the other part of this is the expectations angle. It's one thing, money being cheap right now, but when the Fed tells us that interest rates will stay on the floor for several years, even if the economy recovers, that's a completely different ballgame. Never has the the threat of, of higher interest rates in the future been so distant. Of course, it's not just central banks. Governments have done their part as well. They have uh, borrowed and spent huge amounts of money on relief programs. And it doesn't happen often, but when cheap money policies meet massive government uh, spending, that's rocket fuel for for markets. The U.S. Congress is working on a a new almost $2 trillion package, and President Biden has promised another big package that will focus on infrastructure after that one. Now, there's also the angle of small investors uh, contributing to this party. So essentially, this new generation of day traders has discovered new sophisticated ways to propel uh, stocks higher. That's done through options. They've essentially weaponized options which have embedded leverage and that that helps uh, that plays into this narrative, even though I won't go into too much detail. Now, where does all of this leave us? Valuations have absolutely gone through the roof. Price to earnings ratios, price to sales ratios have exploded. The famous Buffett indicator, which is the the entire stock market capitalization relative to the size of the US economy is also at record highs. And overall, it looks like a bubble. But the thing about bubbles is that they can last for a very long time. They can last for longer than anyone thinks possible. And in that sense, I think that uh, this party could keep going for, you know, for now at least. Okay, so what might cause this bubble to burst? Well, that's an excellent, that's a really tough question. What we learned this past year was that when the policy support is so tremendous, there isn't much that can damage the markets. Any trouble simply means more support for even longer. So, for, for example, if we were to discover a new mutated uh, strain of the coronavirus that is resistant to the existing vaccines, I think that would spark a, a correction in the markets, but not a crash, right? Because it would only delay the reopening of the, of the global economy. Now, beyond that, I think that the real risk might be inflation. We've seen markets uh, really price in higher inflation going forward. And even though the Fed has been adamant that they will not raise interest rates under any circumstances, they will look through any any inflation episode. I think that if inflation is running at 3% or higher, their resolve is really going to be tested. And if they start getting cold feet and they signal that they might start raising a little bit earlier than the markets currently expect, that could really spark, let's say, a reality check in the markets. Overall, I think that we can continue, but all eyes on the Fed for when all this might change. Marios, thanks so much. And thanks for joining us at XM.com.